This video is sponsored by Trugo Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today, June 7th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We're in a unexpected or unpredicted geomagnetic storm. A minor G1 class geomagnetic storm is underway on June 7th following the unexpected impact of a coronal mass ejection or perhaps an interplanetary shock wave. The transit struck Earth's magnetic field at approximately 1130 UTC time, opening a crack in Earth's magnetosphere and briefly spiking geomagnetic storm levels to category G2. The crack has closed and the storm is subsiding. We're taking a look at our KP indexes here. First, our Boulder KP index. We show a G1 geomagnetic storm followed by three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. On our Fredericksburg KP index, we show six hours of a G1 geomagnetic disturbance. On our estimated planetary index, and that's in no both hues, we show a G2 geomagnetic storm followed by a G1 geomagnetic storm. And on our college index, we started a little bit early with a geomagnetic disturbance into a G2 geomagnetic storm and then into a G3 geomagnetic storm. So it's all in who you believe, but they all are lining up to well, verify that we're under a solar storm or geomagnetic storm currently. Taking a closer look at our planetary K index, our estimated planetary KP index, newly vamped for NOAA and NASA, we actually see six hours of a G2 KP6 geomagnetic storm. The 5.67 would be a G2 geomagnetic storm, so six hours of G2. Again, unexpected, but it's going to be very easy to see what caused this. We're under G2 geomagnetic storm conditions. We had a moderate geomagnetic storm. What is a moderate geomagnetic storm? A less common, moderately intense disturbance in Earth's magnetic field. It often varies intensity between lower levels and moderate storm conditions over the course of some hours during the duration of the event. Those under or near the 30-minute prediction auroral extent may look for auroras if at night and should weather conditions permit possible technological effects. Slight risk for some controllable power fluctuations in elements of our power grid. Generally negligible impacts for short duration events to spacecraft operations. This was published today, June 7th at 16.02 UTC time. G2 level conditions were reached at 14.56 UTC time today. Taking a look at the timing and using our heads, we can pretty much guarantee that this event right here, the double M flare, M shaped double M flare, is probably the cause that occurred on June 5th. That would be about the right timing for this event. And I did think that a coronal mass ejection was created by that event on June 5th. So that's going to be the educated swag or wag wild ass guess here, but I am guessing that that double M flare is the cause of this coronal mass ejection impact or geomagnetic storm impact. Taking a look at our Discover satellite, real time solar winds, we definitely see the event here. It is a mess. And if we get to about 
1455, you can see that they called out almost the top of the event here. We had plasma go to about 1879, which is not extreme, but definitely in space weather territory. Now that lasted about two and a half, three hours. It looks like it subsided and we're no longer in a space weather event. I would guess that our next KP index marker is going to reflect that very fact. Now we did also have solar winds increase here. We had them down as low as 338 and it looks like they peaked out at 513. So that's quite an increase in solar wind speed. Remember, just one kilometer per second is over 2,200 miles an hour, and this is almost 200 of them. So we're talking about a half a million miles an hour faster with solar winds here. Uh, I'm not seeing what I'd love to see with temperature. It's following our solar winds instead of our plasma which is something that we've just seen started to happen. Now, again, I believe this is the event in question. It looks like an M3.4 followed by an M2.6 flare right here. It's going to be again June 5th. Now, we have had an M flare again today. Let's take a look at that M flare. All right, we see that we have had an M4.05 solar flare here now we don't see it listed here it happened around eight or nine utc time and it's just not here they do have it listed up here which tells me it might have been a filament eruption we will take a look at sto to see if we can see that eruption the m6.12 was yesterday's strong m flare we have a 10 percent chance of X-class solar flares today, which is a small chance. We have a 50% chance of additional M-class solar flares today, which can be moved up to 100%. It looks like we just had an M1.2, according to this. And we're running a C baseline, currently a C 4.17, but I believe, again, it's coming down from a small M-flare. So our C baseline is closer to a C2 baseline. I want to jump back briefly and show you the 1.1 M flare here. It occurred at about 1630 UTC time as discussed. So two M flares actually today. Headed over to HMI Intensigram, I wanted to point out that 3697 is headed towards the limb and is still basically dual effective towards Earth because of our connection to that side of the limb. We've also had several new sunspots named 3708, 3707, and 3709. So all in all, we have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 Earth-facing sunspots, although some will be going around the limb, and additional sunspots are coming around to be named. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have gone to STO to see if we can see where this M4 flare originated at. And it would be at around 9 UTC time. And I tell you what, I've been looking and looking, and I just don't see anything. We have an event on the far limb over here, but it doesn't match up. That, again, was the time period right there. You'll see 9 o'clock here, 6, 7, 8, 9. If y'all do see something, please let me know. I don't see a filament eruption or any solar flares. And that's on 193 and 171. I guess this is a first of all times here. We'll bring this to 9 UTC time as well. Uh, we're at 1 right now to see if there was that weird event coming around the limb there. A lot of action from the sunspots there. Nine, nothing occurs. I don't see a film eruption on 171 or 193. Angstroms, uh, I just see it on our goes. Very, very strange. 
And again, so you don't think I'm crazy, six, seven, eight, nine UTC time. And it was a M, actually an M4.01 right here. Right after nine UTC time, we see nothing. Followed by a very small M1.1 flare. Finally, we see what's coming around the limb here. 023, absolutely huge, followed by 026, probably under parts of 023. 023 will break up into numerous sunspot groups, and I think part of it's already been named, as this is always a day and a half old. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. We've been in six hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm, and I think I felt it. Please share, please subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in the bizarro world.